welcome back. Uh, I got another countertop behind me. Uh, you, if you've watched our old fashioned traditional countertop finishing video, this is the countertop from that video, I believe. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna sand it down and refinish it uh, using our new uh, Universal Tongue Oil Sealer, otherwise known as UTOS, and our H2O Lox products. Uh, we'll show you how that's done. Uh, I'll do, do a quick tutorial on how to sand and strip this finish. Uh, I'm going to do sanding, but you can also do chemical strippers as well. Um, paint and varnish remover will remove water locks. Water locks does penetrate into those wood fibers, but it is not all the way through your wood. As some may think or believe, yes, it soaks in pretty well, but it is removable. So the key to a good sanding is lots of different grits, successive grits of sandpaper and working your way from coarse to do the brunt of the work and then basically we're going to polish that up and we're going to basically what each step does is removes the scratches from the previous step until you make them small enough that the eye won't really pick it up. So what I like to do and what I have on hand is I start with 40. You could even go lower than that. The lower the number, the coarser the paper. This is going to be your best way to eat through as much wood as possible. When we're trying to remove finish, we want to do it quick and, I guess, coarse. That way we're stripping finish without removing, without creating a whole bunch of heat and just trying to melt finish or, or spending too much time working to get off the finish. So it's better to go coarse and quick and just get it off and then we work up to 60 grit to remove the scratches from the 40. Follow that with 80 to remove the scratches from the 60. 100 to remove the scratches from the 80. And 120 to remove the scratches from the 100. By far the longest step is this 40 step. We're going to be removing a whole bunch of material, removing the finish, getting down to fresh wood like we have over here. And that's why I usually have a bunch of different 40 discs. But really once you get the finish off and smooth and you get a good clean finish free surface. You really only need one piece of paper for most medium, small to medium jobs to just kind of clean up that from the 40. So we're going to we're going to gunk up these 40s uh, much more than the other ones because all of our finish should be removed by the time we get to the 60. So key is start course, go quick and work your way through. Good afternoon everybody, uh, we're getting ready to sand our uh, butcher block countertop and just wanted to go over a few things that you'll need. We've already talked about this going excessive grits of paper um, and then beyond that one of the best things that uh, has been invented recently is dust collection. Um, so you can usually do this with very minimal sanding dust being kicked up and, and stirred up uh, and actually keeping your air pretty clean. Um, nothing is ever 100% dust free, but a lot of this stuff will do a lot to help you uh, keep everything that way. Uh, so we, first we have our paper, second we have our random oscillating sander. Uh, this is a Fest tool, uh, I believe it's a 6 inch. Uh, you can see all these holes in here is kind of where the dust gets vacuumed up. And then we have a vacuum hose. And one of the best things you can do for your vacuum, for your dust collection system, is get a dust collector, uh, a cyclone. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties out there. Um, these cyclones I like the best. I think they're pretty easy to use. You just kind of got a hole in a bucket. You got to caulk it on there, so there's a bit of setup involved. That's not really our wheelhouse. There's plenty of videos and how-tos uh, on how to do that. Um, you can even also buy them pre-fabricated. They're a bit expensive, so if you're only doing one or two projects, it's probably not worth it. But if you're going to get into woodworking, uh, they are a great investment, and they're very portable too. So it makes it easy to take it outside for bigger projects, or keep it in your shop, or whatever. Maybe just pop the lid off, and you have to uh, you dump your dust out. Um, the vacuum connects to here, and the tool connects to here. It creates a cyclone to get it before it ever gets to your vacuum filter. It helps your vacuum filter stay longer. And then, uh, of course, we have a vacuum behind me. That's what's doing all the collecting. And then another nifty tool is these um, socket auto switch. So they're built for jobs like these where you have uh, the top plug is the tool 
and the bottom plug is the vacuum. Uh, very well labeled. I think there's a few varieties out there and these aren't that expensive. Um, and it just plugs into a single socket. And what this does is you turn your vacuum on and it will not kick on until you pull the trigger of your uh, sander. So when it senses power, the vacuum turns on and the vacuum continues to run for about five seconds until after your uh, trigger is released. Therefore, it clears the lines out of any dust. Uh, and you can basically make this whole process very dust free. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the actual sanding, but uh, this is kind of the setup that I use for doing all the sanding. Again, we'll do the most of the work with that 40 grit. We'll tear through everything. Uh, and then we'll work our way back up to 120. So just a quick note, uh, if you see this countertop, it's partially unfinished. Um, most of you, if you're doing a new countertop project, it'll probably be unfinished. So I'm starting at 40 because that's gonna remove this finish the fastest. If you already have uh, an unfinished surface and it's in pretty good shape, I would just go right to 100 or even 120 just to kind of get rid of any marks or damage from shipment or, or movement. Um, a lot of times, you know, if it's strapped to something, you'll see little marks from where it was strapped down, or if there was plastic wrap on it, you may see some marks, um, or they may have, you know, drawn on it with a pencil or anything like that to indicate what it was or whatever it was. So very light sanding is always a good idea. Most of the time, it probably doesn't actually need it, but that gets everything consistent, gets all your grain open to the same grain, and then you know what you're starting with. Um, if it's in pretty good shape, I always end with a hand sand. So I'm gonna use this orbital to get all the way there. And if you want to orbital sand everything, always do a hand sand at the end at the exact same grit you finish with. So I'm gonna sand, orbital sand all the way up to 120 and then hand sand with 120 with the grain just to get rid of any less uh, swirls or any marks or anything that from the oscillating of the sand. So that's just a, another quick tip there. Okay, so we're sanding our countertop down. Uh, remember there was a previous finish on here before, so we did the majority of the work with that 40 grit. Um, you can still see some slight color there, so we probably didn't get 100% of it off, but that's okay. Uh, so we're gonna move up to our uh, 60 grit next. Uh, I just wanted to stop and touch base and do some quick tips here. So one of the important things when sanding is you don't wanna spend too much time in one spot and dish out. You know, you don't want to just drive the sander down into one spot. You'll end up with a depression there. So a good trick is take a pencil and just kind of lightly draw over the whole surface. It doesn't have to be, you know, not drawing on it hard. We're just kind of rubbing the pencil over the surface. That way we're going to sand until all the pencil's gone when we move, with, move through our grits. So that way we make sure we're sanding our surface relatively evenly over the whole surface so we're not getting uneven or, or waviness or anything like that. Uh, the other thing you may notice is the edges. Um, a lot of people when they get to the edge they kind of tend to roll the, the sander over and that just kind of creates a, a beveled edge. So I'm going to kind of leave those alone as we work through our grits and eventually we'll kind of get down to a more level area as you can see on the edge here. So we tend to just leave that alone as we work through and eventually we get there. If we get down to the 120 grit as our final sand and it's still there, we can just do a quick hand pass and that usually takes care of that uh, slight on the edge. Uh, also on the actual edge, I didn't go 40 on here. Uh, it tends to be pretty aggressive and there's usually not much finish on the sides. Uh, you got gravity working against you. So again, usually a quick pass at that uh, 120 level and that's enough to strip that finish off. And then we'd go by hand just to kind of smooth everything out. So we'll continue on to 60 and then 80, 100 and 120 and then we're ready to coat. Okay, we're back at our countertop project. Uh, we just finished our sanding. Uh, you can even see a couple of spots here after we just wiped it down with our paint and our mineral spirits. So just to summarize, uh, we did an orbital sanding. We had finish on here already, so we started at 40. We worked up to 60, then 80, uh, then 100, and then finally 120 for our final sand with the, uh, the Festool uh, random oscillating sander. Uh, you always, again, follow that up with a hand sand that gets rid of any tools or swirl marks. I just put a piece of paper, 120 grit, again, same grit you finish with on a sanding block. You went over it by hand real quick just to kind of get everything with the grain and get everything, all possible swirl marks gone. 
and then we vacuumed it off, wiped it down with paint and our mineral spirits, and we're ready to coat. Uh, just a quick note, we always recommend a final sand between 100 and 150. I usually stop at 120. Um, that keeps the wood nice and open. Uh, going above a 150 doesn't really help much because again, we're going to put a finish over this wood surface. So you're not really interacting with the wood itself. You're interacting with the water locks finish. Um, if you're ever going to sand an actual finish, you're usually doing something like 320 or 400. So even if you went to 220, you're never actually touching that 220 surface. You're just closing off that wood more and keeping that penetration down. Uh, the only time you would vary from that is if you're doing something with stain. Uh, if you watched our uh, staining video for the bottom of that countertop there, uh, you can sand to close off the wood more, get less color, or use things like pre-stained conditioners to get less color, or you can stop at lower grits like 80 uh, or 100 to get a little bit more color, keep the wood more open. So that would be the only time I would do something uh, different than that. Um, from here, next step is we're going to apply a sealer. And then we'll apply our two coats of finish and we'll have a nice uh, birch butcher block countertop.